the parents, you know, the, the people who saw it as kids, think enough of it to bring their kids along to it, really means something. But you know, in the way that you can't it's still a modern that. phenomenon because if you read Keith Chandler's book carefully, you find most of the cops on Morrisside didn't have that long life. No. They were actually there for the money, as it were, or for the occasion, for the few years they were into the group. There are, other than Bampton, you know, and probably Abbey Lucas Law Square, there were not long lived Cotswold sides in the past. And that's another complaint, you see. I mean, half the sides represented here don't, aren't in the Cotswolds anyway. What are they doing doing our dances? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to maintain your dances in your possession, you must do them in private, and you must treat them in the same way that certain religious rituals are treated. There was a guy who used to appear at the Spouters' Corner in London, and he used to say, I have a secret. It was a very poor act. He had. I have a secret. And he went on for about five minutes shouting out a secret, and people had shouted at him, what's your secret? And he said, if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret. And that really is what it comes down to. If you don't want people to copy it, make sure they don't see it. But if you let other people know about it... Have you seen the, the, the amount of crowd we draw? <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting, it's if interesting that If we your don't... family won't go and watch you, you are in serious problems. <laughs> sure, surely it's interesting. Family? I'm not having them along. <laughs> what we see today... <laughs> what, what we see today, and as performed in Sherborne, which we may get the opportunity to do this weekend, what we see performed today at Sherborne, was collected from someone who lived in Didcot. And what's more, it's Didcot Did it have a ring to it? That sounds very nice. So, so do we have a, mis do we have a total have misconception about what the dance is anyway? But I mean, what is this hang up about location? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's wrong. I mean, you know, this, this thing about Cotswolds that Roy did, we threw in a moment ago and everybody ignored. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> Yeah, but it's because it's a tag that's been stuck on it. Everyone believes it's true. I mean, the Hanks family... How many Cotswold sides today are actually based in the village? And there is probably one of them, actually based in the village. They did actually say you had one dancer from the village at one time. Come on, come on. Ten. That's traditional, the victory between the two teams. Interesting. Interesting point, I was talking to someone I was talking to yeah, someone who actually, dances for the other team recently. We were talking about this whole thing about him when he lived in the village. <laughs> and a question <laughs> came up about their musician at the present moment. And I said, Why? Tom's never lived in the village. Oh, he said, You've got it wrong. He said, A musician never came from the village. Very traditional. <laughs> <laughs> so, very so, interesting. I like it. But I mean, we've had the argument at Bampton about, you know, three sides and how many actually are, are people in the village. Oh, well, it's irrelevant today. Surely they can't. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, 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 yeah. I, I really like living where I do now because it only takes me ten minutes to get to work and that's less than it is when I used to walk. I'm five miles away, but it's socially completely different. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's the way the world's changed. Mm. Yeah, but we don't, yeah, unfortunately, there are some people that don't recognise the fact we are now nearly in the 21st century. Unfortunately, there are people who are, there, who are out there dancing more us today who think they are in the 17th century still. Except they wouldn't like to do that. No, no, but they do want to think that. They wouldn't even dance like that if they were there. Yeah. yeah. They right. think that way. <laughs> This isn't the history of the world. We should pay since, them in 17th century. Since the restoration of the Golden Age of Morris. Well, that's right. The Golden Age of Morris is <laughs> today. Yeah. More people doing it There's more people Morris. doing it now than there ever yeah. has been before. I said Golden Age is now. I'm with not only more people, but the problem is getting better. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I said earlier on about this whole idea that some of the boys excellence is being what Morris is. It's not. It's doing what you can with the people you are with. The difference between Morris dancers and Christians is that most of the Morris dancers ever are alive, and most of the Christians ever are dead. <laughs>
think about it. Is that a suitable moment to finish? <laughs> I brought my horn to New Abbots for me and I don't care whether it's sneaking No one else can tell. It's like that step with us. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. It comes off. I thought like about the white weight as well. I would have thought so. Yeah. That they're too light. Go on then. About 10 seconds. Oh, I'm going to attach them to you. Yes, if I wear them, it's carry me. Those who were here 18 months ago realised I put together a programme then and I'm going to vaguely stick to it, vaguely being the right thing, right? Now, to start with, one of the main things you get there, you get some paperwork. Now, it's like this you start at this end. And you pick up what's called a square cut folder. There are 59 of these sets, or at least there were when I came to them. But I did drop the box of all the bits and pieces in my car. <laughs> so uh, I haven't got this there, but this is the prime bundle, which, believe it or not, is in fact expanded notes of workshops I've been running during the summer. Um, and we'll probably be doing all that. This next lot is labelled Making Cots or Dancers for Three, but it's about threes, fours, fives, and nines, you do that for it. And hopefully we'll have a session where people contribute, this being a workshop. This is original 1962 or 63 notes about the Bidford Morris before the Stratford on Avon Morris had taken it all over. You know, when there was a boy's side at Bidford and the way I collected material <coughs> from local people. This is Matashan, which is a um, Tudor dance, Morris dance, which we would do. This is a Spanish Morris stick dance, Morris dance, collected in Guam. Well, you know, in this days of United Nations and things like that. Unfortunately, the, Sp the Spanish still do things like that. Would do that. And um, just for the hell of it, what will probably be a, a private workshop for you is uh, some notations to the Maori stick dancers, which have the great virtue you do them sitting dead. <laughs> you know? No. If you've ever actually done Morris dancers sitting in a railway compartment, you'll understand the beauty of actually sitting down. So what you do, anyhow, is start at one end in an orderly fashion. You take one each and don't take one to your friends until we've actually got rid of them all, as it were. <laughs> you'll notice there's nothing about Bampton, but we did that last night, and there'll be nothing about Duckington because it's in here. This one, B and M did this one last time. What this dance? Oh, the um, yeah. Cotswold dance for three. Oh, I thought you were going along in a line.
go. You're not a lady to stand in this position, that's all. But she can stand on the stage or sit if you like. It can be a long day. I'm sure it will. We have the classic problem that to make ends meet, there are more of you here than there's actually space to accommodate. If any of you really feel you actually really are competitive, my dance at the back and the bar are eight on the ground. You won't actually hear what's going on. <laughs> you have plenty of room. Right. Now, what we're going to start with this morning, last, last time we had a bit of fun, you know, so my experience is about this. This morning, we're going to start with A. Ilmington. I say A Ilmington, and I will have to explain what I mean by that. As far as we know, Sharp's version put galleys into suit yourself, which is actually 
you rather fun because when you do the hay, if you gather when you turn, then the hay is all will give you different time to do. You know, from the other side, it's quite fascinating to see. Um, and on our side, I think Errol's Wessex in this country, um, can actually do that. And quite, looks quite good. But unfortunately, Ellington Galley starts looking like any other position in Galley, and that's all. Now, when Sam Bennett's side got going, um, the only teams around for them to be influenced by were Bidford, which we'll have a go at later on this weekend, and Chip and Camden. And they were done to a very free sort of style. And the Mary Neal publication of Birmingham talk about a single rolling step with alternate arm movements, you know. Trump, movement, none of this classic Morrison. Even when um, Sharp was you know, collecting himself from the older men, um, he, when asking what the step was, all the people except one actually danced to a single step. You know, but they did say that Michael Johnson, the oldest, uh, occasionally danced to the double step, and that's why Sharp produced in the end the way that we, as I say, to do it. But for this morning, we're actually going to Right, dance free and not too fast. Can we actually have a little bit of uh, free with the arms and legs moving dancing? Um, we could start with Shepherd's Hair, I suppose. That's fun, isn't it? <laughs>
the personal space there is this much of travel quite so fast in going around. Keep the level of effort up, but don't actually uh, travel. Because if you travel too far, um, well, there'll be people in the way. Right, so put up on the spot facing up, turn eight to face down, turn in to face across. Chorus. Now we're going to do back to back. We all know what a back to back is, isn't it? Same book as uh, you'll notice that if there are any jumps at the end of figures and not in the middle. Chorus, then a whole jip. Whole jip. <coughs> it's they never did cross a uh, cross and turn, they just did basically a whole jip, you know, like crab to mouth. You just go green <coughs> each other. And we do that out of loop. Until we get to, I get fed up with it from my tell the musician that we're going on the next bit and I shake a whole range. Right? Let's just try that. You're supposed to know all the details in between. <laughs>
then holding your stick in the middle, it's tips, back, tips, back, tips, back, tips, seven.
last of Sam Bennett's Morris Bandits. About the, you know, about what it is. Now, one of the problems was he was fairly blind, so he got these photographs out and pointed arbitrarily at the paper. Who was who? But he was quite clear about the fact that it was the handkerchief dance. Uh, I mean, there were dance specific names, but the handkerchief dance and stick dance. Because, you know, um, Sam played what, he, what Sam wanted to play and he did it. Right. Now, in Bidford, just over there, the foreman didn't tell the team what the stick tapping was when they did the stick dance. They had to see what he did to start with. Right. So you can't do that anymore. That's what I could do, but I'm not going to get away with it. But we're going to do the same, same dance. We're going to pick up one of the other ones. Can I do this with you?
You're going to find in this session that we're actually going to do multiple versions of the same gun because of these different refinements. So not to worry about that. If you ever, ever use any of this material, you just select what you like. Or do it all. It doesn't really matter. It's the performance, not the content that matters. The important bit anyway is that when you come to the where will be the jumps and halfway into the things and so on, you know, you clash the sticks, right? But you clash it by the evens hold their stick out and the odds hit.
pistol, same dance, the sword roller. Maybe actually a bit simpler, but easier to remember. Now we're going to finish the session, Molly Oxford. Uh, my Oxford was simpler than the first revival, and much more complicated than the second. Right? Now, for this, I'll go back for a moment, the figures are foot up and down, like we did in the Shepherd's Home, and hold you, you know, face it as you go around each other. Now, face your opposite for a chorus. Now, it's an open side step to the left so that the two lines are uncovered. Go to your left, no waves, that's right. And then back to the right with a.
then you get to a piece of resistance. Right. Whatever that means. Bars of it, but just thought I might warn you. Right, 16 bars of it. No, today? The Molly Oxford, I think that's right. Yeah. Right, face up. <coughs> we foot up, move up. Just move and then back to face. Then face your opposite and dance on the spot. Now the next figure we haven't met before is just forward and back. That's straight face to face with the person and back. <laughs> and then it's half of a figure which I should call. Let's say half of half two. The first half of half two next, right? Now we get to the delightful bit of shuffling to the left and to the right. Half A, yet another shuffle to the left and right, and then the other half for the figure that we've already done half of, the other half of half G. That completes a sequence. We're now having changed ends. We do a foot up, but we're all going the other way. Right, follow the lead, just go down. And we go down, back, face on the spot, forward and back. Now we're going to do half of another figure, like back to back. Shuffle to the left, shuffle to the right. Half a. <laughs> Shuffle to the left. Shuffle to the right. And now the half of back to back. We're going to meet cross and turn and half frames as figures as well. They have to watch for these which we end up unlikely place in the set to do this chorus. Now you should all be back where we started, you should
should have had enough explanations of people like yourself if it wasn't good enough to ask your neighbours because they won't know it. Right. Right. Sue, pursue this dance.
of the Pacific and so on. Spanish had this policy where they built up an empire after Columbus. Uh, bear in mind that Columbus discovered America about two years, about 20 years after Morris was first mentioned in England. So yeah, it was the co going theme at that time. But where they, they took over, they tried to suppress the good Christian or good Jesuits, anyway. Um, tried to suppress native customs, which they were quite successful doing in Mexico and Peru and so on. And unfortunately, they found that that left the natives with nothing to do. You, know, uh, you can't expect natives just to work continuously 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and things like that. Uh, they did in the Victorian times, but very well, not so much. Um, as a result, the Jesuits then started teaching them dance for things to do. And in the Pueblo Indian part of the States, um, you'll find that at the right time of year, usually their Christmas, the locals, whether they're actually Pueblo Indians or the Spanish settlements, will actually perform the Morris dance and the Matashan and things like that, the dances which come we report to them from Europe. But the interesting thing from our point of view is that um, they have been swimming. Uh, this Mexican and uh, New Mexico dances, but you can see when you compare the Spanish and Indian communities, the Indian aspect and the Spanish aspect. You know, and you can well imagine when you look at it, I remove relevant cultural pieces of uh, what's left out that could be Indian for the English people, you know, and that's just the Morris. And the characteristics of it is that it's all very simple. I went on and on and on. So a set of 16, as it were, uh, people um, can do a 20 minute dance with no difficulty whatsoever you know, when everybody leaves you know, and things of that sort. But you have to bear in mind they did it once a year. You know? And if you do your dance once, once a year, then you make the most of it. You know? No question of three minutes, I must move on to somebody else to keep the audience amused. You, know, you are the audience. But, so they took dances all the way around the world. And I say, well, what is interesting is that the six dancers tend to be this fact, six tapping, no figures in the sense of the world, which is also true of the dance in the same Portugal today. So, um, although they are, I would say remote, you, know, you, can, you can see a connection between what the taken around and what to survive in the country themselves. The great thing was it doesn't look like English Morris at all. But there's no reason to imagine there was a connection uh, between <laughs> those Spanish dancers and the English dancers and so on. So now some years ago we were talking to Francis Sugar at Mountain, he and his brother started to describe the town that uh, Gigi Wells started to teach them a two person jig, each with two sticks. The tune was called The Forestry Keeper's Daughter, but they couldn't remember the tune, and they hadn't really got cast for time. <laughs> right. So they never really learned it, so it's an irrecoverable dance. But there are the, the odd sort of reference to the stick type jigs in the console, none of which are so very good connected, and they were sort of rumored, and so on. So I've always kept my eyes over this one, and I'm sorry this one comes from the far red and blue to the get. <laughs> but just my life. You need to be in pairs. Right, so choose your pair. It's preferable that person is something about the same height. Now the first problem we're going to have is that we're so used when clapping to do like Shepard say.
between our legs. <coughs> like that.
will see my like panicky practice. <laughs> <laughs> right. <coughs> Thanks, Sue.
do your best to get through from the beginning to the end. No, are we ready? Face, beat the grain without going anywhere.
There is some. Uh, don't worry. Yeah. Only 80 points, though. It's <laughs> at this year's solo jig competition at Sidmouth, the winner did backer pipes. Now, if you ever, like me, adjudicated festivals where you see 18 brownies doing the first three figures a back of pipes out of shark book, firmly believing they're doing Kimber's dance when they're not, because the Morris book actually is a collection of figures from Somerset, which might interest anybody from that part of the world, the heading to dance being different and described in Bacon, uh, so on. It's always been seen as, like the Fulci, a simple beginner's type dance, you know, one way of working out dance skills on, never seen as one of the high spots of Morris. Now, when you see this, if you hadn't seen it, David Sidmouth, you'll suddenly realise now that back of pipe is the most challenging dance in the book. All right. So can we actually see that? I think, is this the um, yeah, start, evening? Do you want, which one do you want to see first? I don't mind which one first. <laughs> oh, and then whichever one's ready. Yeah, that's ready. Right. If the volume... <laughs> Where my friend Dave Cooper and they sell church warden pipes, would you make the only talk that you do? a notation you can get one of these for 10 quid. <laughs> this is a sign in the evening. Well that's uh...
Yeah. What more can you say? <laughs> well, it's this lot, anyway. <laughs> we got the notations for that, have we? <laughs> so you got, you got the video. Yeah, so you yeah, see that video. You know what you do is you watch it, and then you go away. Yeah. Absolutely. Play the game, you can sit there and try it. When it's dark, it's easy, we'll go and scare the chickens. Do you feel it's safe to say that fire dancers don't have a place to take in the English tradition? I think it's not. That's one of the things that struck me about It's probably an import from our colonies in East Asia. Much more exotic. I think the fact that it's not even in the middle of the talk to me. We normally recommend those. It's a bit it does, isn't it? Hmm? I felt it was your copy of the first scene. That's right, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, no, can, we copy, can we copy that on the end of the page? Yes, sir. In fact, I'll put them together. The atmosphere is quite different. Do you want this? This one. Show them the Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, Well, I don't think we're going to attempt to do that. Back up five. Back up five. Back up five. In the face of that, I think anything that everybody else does should just listen to everybody else. Twenty years. 
ago, it's now evolved into something that is part of Edwin. Uh, this is a corrupted field town long figure dance. Uh, if we, we'll demonstrate it in a minute so you'll get an idea of how it goes, but for those who know field town, it's a corrupted long figure dance. And it's a column dancing course, and it's called Sucking the Monkey. The origins of which are definitely to go into the way. But uh, if not myself, Lee and Colin demonstrate half, say the left, the left hand, the odds side of the set, and just to see how it sort of goes. And, uh,
doing one double step, clap, 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 back step, back step, feet to the jump. Uh, and you repeat going down. Uh, I think it is that. Uh, that's the first figure, then you do a chorus. The next figure is rounds, long figure rounds. So you, we just move around one place, you can go around halfway, decide any sets, however far you go around in field town. Uh, so it's one round, two rounds, sorry. Into the middle, whatever, back steps out, four back steps, then you're all facing in, double step, hand clapping, back step, back step, feet to the jump, and back. So it's long figures with a hand clapping group. But you do both of those figures together. So it's push up and down, and then the half rounds and back. Then we'll put it into courses later. So just try the two figures then, please. <laughs> Thank you. 
degree turn, so it's up, out, down, in, ready for round. So it sort of needs to tidy it up. Then you do rounds, then it's easy. The final course, you finish on a course, exactly the same sequence, it's side step, side step, clap, 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 feet together, jump, two lots of slows in fill turns, so you do the upright papers for the second course. Four plain papers in at the end. And then we'll come to the guesses after. Which scores I take by comparison, I think. Do the whole thing? I'll call it the test as possible. Hold dance, we're all back to the original places. Basically, an hour 
to sort your sape and sort your sape a dance or more each group, and then we come back here and actually do it for each other, right? There are the tape recorders, there are the tapes. Divide yourself into six mutually compatible groups. <laughs>